Hello folks, welcome or welcome back to another edition of Undercover Lies, the site that actually proves that the wannabe dictator Trump tried to overthrow our government and we expose his co-conspirators. We dive deep into one of Trump's ex-secretaries of state and troubled man, Mike Pompeo. But first, let's get into this edition's week of woe, or as Donald J. Trump Jr. says it, a week of blue. First up in this edition's Week of Woe, a New York judge this week signed off on a ruling to hold former President Donald Trump in civil contempt and demanded he pay $10,000 per day until he can produce documents to Attorney General James to cure the uh, contempt charge. Michael Cohen, his ex-lawyer and fixer, mentions that some documents are already in the public domain, so he does not understand why Trump would not show these documents. Trump states, although, that he has no documents all to show or to give to Letitia James. So the judge told me he's either telling her to shut up or put up. Let's see what happens. Again, we have Mr. Trump on the uh, on this week of woe. Trump states that although Elon Musk has been making moves to buy Twitter for $44 billion, he states that he will not be returning to Twitter and will be staying on his own new social media site, False City. I mean, uh, True Social. And let's cut across to more breaking news that's coming in on this story. There's endless speculation now with Elon Musk taking over Twitter. Will Trump return to the social media giant? Former U.S. President Donald Trump has confirmed that he will not return to Twitter even if his account is reinstated following the purchase by Elon Musk. Trump has told U.S. media channel Fox News that he will formally join his own truth social startup over the next seven days as planned. Remember, after Trump was ousted from Twitter, he decided to start his own social media platform. So that's actually opening up in the next few days, which is why the former U.S. president has made it clear that no matter who takes over Twitter, or whether it changes hands or not, he's not coming back. He has never been or used his own uh, social media page, but now... He says that he's going to stay on it. Uh, shouldn't he be on it first before he can stay on it? Finally, in this edition's week of woe, Marjorie Taylor Greene shows her head again and lying about not remembering that she suggested martial law on January 17, 2021. See, Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is under all new scrutiny as she fights in court to be allowed to seek re-election. Greene's been accused of suggesting former President Trump declare martial law in order to stay in power. Greene says she has no recollection of that. But a text message obtained by CNN shows Greene telling former Trump, former President Trump, chief of staff, Mark Meadows, that some Republican members of Congress did want to see martial law enacted. Which is a week or two after January 6th insurrection. She was telling these lies before a hearing that is trying to keep her from being on the ballot this year in to run in Georgia. So they're trying to keep her off the ballot. She's fighting it, but she's up there uh, screwing herself by inciting that she and Trump were tied to the January 6th insurrection. That's it for this edition's Week of Woe. Join us again next week for another edition. Let's get into the uh, Trader's Row and Mike Pompeo. Anyway, let's get into this snivelly little card, Michael Richard Pompeo, who was a corrupt American politician who belongs to the even more corrupt Republican Party, as well as Donald Trump's cabinet secretary. He served as Trump's CIA director from 2017 to 2018, as well as being the 70th U.S. Secretary of State from 2018 to 2021. I don't suppose you'd like the two months when Trump was talking about the CIA, how shitty it was, and how he wouldn't take its uh, its word over Putin's word, but uh, that's Mike Pompeo for you. But then again, who is Mike Pompeo really? As I said before, Pompeo is a corrupt American politician who helped Donald Trump in his coup attempt to take America from the people. He apparently doesn't stick to his beliefs as he started out as one of Trump's critics, correctly calling Trump an authoritarian. Unfortunately, he flipped, most likely, in my opinion anyway, offered a bribe from Trump, either money or a position in his new dictator's cabinet. He changed and became one of Trump's most loyal supporters and fellow conspirator. But before we go any further, let's look at some of Pompeo's past and background 
to maybe help, help understand how he, we got here. Pompeo was born in Orange, California on December 30th, 1963. Close to Christmas, but Pompeo is no gift to this world. He served in the U.S. Army as an officer and was educated at Harvard University, which is surprising and unfortunate as it seems he didn't learn a thing and all that time and knowledge was wasted. Eventually, Pompeo became a member of the U.S. House of Representatives. Can you imagine that? He was Kansas's fourth district representative, serving from January 3rd, 2011 to January 23rd, 2017. After that, he decided to join the dumbest and most corrupt cabinet in history, Trump's. He was assigned as the sixth director of the Central Intelligence Agency, which he served until April 26, 2018, finally ending as Trump's Secretary of State. It seems that Pompeo was one of the key players in Trump's coup, trying to keep Trump in office by any means necessary, including the January 6th insurrection. Falsely crying fraud and also thinking that not conceding the race would keep Trump in office and give him a second Trump administration, as he said, they were going into a second Trump administration. Uh, is the State Department currently preparing to engage with the Biden transition team? And if not, at what point does a delay hamper a smooth transition or pose a risk to national security? There will be a smooth transition to a second Trump administration. While serving as Secretary of State, Pompeo was reported to be among Trump's staunchest loyalists, even though he was a prior critic of Trump's. Pompeo habitually disregarded norms and protocols followed by his predecessors, including, but not limited to, using his office to campaign for Trump's re-election, firing and criticizing State Department inspectors, general, finally, passively standing by while Donald tax evader Trump and his allies harassed career diplomats. A State Department Inspector General report found more than 100 instances of misconduct where Pompeo requested that State Department staff perform personal errands for him and his wife. Imagine his wife is under there too. Under Pompeo's leadership, career State Department officials quit, were forced into retirement, or were fired and were replaced by unqualified, inexperienced appointees that can be manipulated and stay under Trump and his allies' thumbs. Mike Pompeo was one of Trump's most loyal supporters. He did anything that Trump asked him to do, whether it was legal or illegal. Pompeo jumped to it eagerly, and as the Secretary of State, he did a poor-ass job. So, as I said before, this is a piece of crap politician. Well, friends, that's it for, for another edition of Undercover Lies. Join us again next week, where we expose another of Trump's conspirators. Until then, please subscribe if you like. Hit the like button as many times as you can. And remember, America needs your vote.